Hello, my name is Ligia Bernardet. In this presentation, Mike Heck and myself would like to tell you about recent updates to the Common Community Physics Package, the CCPP, and also about its outlook for the future. We would like to start by thanking the CCPP developer team at DTC, Dom Heinzeller, Grant Furrow, Laurie Carson, Man Zhang, Julie Schramm, Shia Sung, Wei Wei Li, and Jimmy Dudia. In this presentation, we will cover the three elements of the CCPP, the physics, which is a library of physical parametrizations, the framework, the software infrastructure that allows using the CCPP physics with a host model, and the single column model or SCM, a single host that employs the CCPP physics and framework. Since October 2020, four new schemes were added to the library of physics. The DRAG suite, developed at the NOAA Global Systems Laboratory, GSL, the version of the NOAA land surface model used by the Hurricane Wharf model, the NOAA Geophysical Fluid Dynamics Laboratory, GFDL, surface layer scheme, and the Thomson Partial Cloudiness Parametrization. In addition, many schemes were updated, and here we just list some highlights. The NOAA Physical Sciences Laboratory, PSL, updated the RRTMGP radiation scheme. The Navy Research Laboratory, NRL, provided bug fixes for using extra top layers with RRTMGP. GSL updated the Grell Freitas Convective Scheme, the Mellor Yamada Nakanishi Nino Boundary Layer and Surface Schemes, as well as the Thompson Microphysics and the Rapid Update Cycle Land Surface Model. And the NOAA Environmental Modeling Center, EMC, updated the NOAA Multi-Parametrization, NOAA-MP, land surface model, the Flake Lake model, the SAS Convective Scheme, and the Thompson Microphysics. In addition to new and updated schemes, several new capabilities were enabled. To create a baseline for the development of the Global Forecast System, GFS, version 17, a CCPP-compliant emulation of GFS version 16 was assembled. To create baselines for the Global Ensemble Forecast System, GEFS version 13, branches were created in the CCPP repositories for various prototypes of the coupled system. To serve as a starting point for the development of the Rapid Refresh Forecast System, RRFS, all schemes needed for the RRFS Alpha Suite were added. To facilitate hierarchical system development, the ability to output tendencies of state variables from various schemes was added. And finally, to keep up with advancements in computational platforms, changes were made to enable compatibility with the GNU 10 Fortran compiler. Suite RRFS V1 Alpha supports the needs of the Unified Forecast System Short Range Weather Application and forms the basis for the development of the High Resolution RRFS, which employs 3 km grid spacing. The RRFS suite uses the Thomson Microphysics, the MINN PBL and shallow convection, the GFS surface layer, no deep convection, the RRTMG radiation, the Unified Gravity Wave Drag, the NOAA-MP Land Surface Model, and the NRL Ozone and Water Photolysis Schemes. While DTC is not currently adding new schemes to the CCPP Physics Library, we are providing support for a few efforts. Namely, GSL is adding the Community Land Model, CLM, Lake Model, for use with the RRFS, and the NOAA National Severe Storms Laboratory, NSSL, is adding its two-moment microphysics scheme. Additionally, GSL is making some schemes compliant with the graphical processing units, and EMC is changing the way in which the CCPP refers to the NOAA MP code. In the future, the CCPP and other efforts using NOAA MP will all refer to a standalone authoritative NOAA MP repository so that various groups are using the same code and always have access to the latest innovations. The last release of the CCPP, version 5, took place in March 2021, 
accompanying the UFS short range weather version 1 release and the single column model version 5 release. The parametrizations for five suites are supported in this release. One suite is the GFS V15P2, which was used in the previously operational GFS version 15. The other four suites are experimental. One of them is the RFS V1 Alpha suite, which was discussed in a previous slide. The other three suites are supported for use with the single column model and are in different phases of development for use in research and operations. The listings in bold font denote changes from the GFS B15P2 suite. An important effort undertaken in the last year revolved around the CCPP standard names. Standard names are a key aspect of the CCPP because they are used to communicate variables between the host model and the physics. Whenever possible, we use standard names provided by the CF convention. However, the CCPP uses many quantities for which the CF convention does not have standard names. In those cases, additional standard names were created by the physics developers. The problem is that there were no rules for the creation of new names and no mechanism for sharing existing names, leading to a proliferation of names sometimes poorly constructed. To address this issue, DTC worked with NCAR and the community to put in place a set of rules for creating new names and a dictionary of standard names in use. Both the rules and the dictionary are housed in the GitHub code repository. Over the last year, a team was assembled to discuss code management practices for the CCPP physics. This team has participants from various institutions such as the DTC, NRL, NOAA, with representation from PSL, NSSL, GSL, and EMC, and NCAR, with participation from the Research Applications Laboratory, the Mesoscale and Microscale Meteorology Laboratory, the Atmospheric Chemistry Observations and Modeling Laboratory, and the Climate and Global Dynamics Laboratory. Discussions centered on what we want the CCPP collaborative effort to look like and focused on our common interests, such as sharing parameterizations and collaborating with the broader community. We made progress in addressing a number of topics so far, such as the code repository structure, shown in the figure, the standardization of names for schemes, the responsibility for review of GitHub pull requests, the best practices for interoperability, and the creation of the Dictionary of Standard Names. We have also had recent advancements in the CCPP framework. First of all, our primary branch was renamed from master to main to conform with anti-racism practices. We added functional and regression tests to ascertain the code integrity during the development process, and we reduced memory usage through a variety of methods, including the use of conditionally allocated arrays on the host side, the use of assumed shape array declarations in CCPP schemes, and the addition of a new attribute to CCPP quantities, the active attribute, which lets the CCPP know if an array is allocated or not so we can skip unnecessary operations in the auto-generated physics caps. We have lots of ideas about how the framework can be further improved. Some of those ideas have been funded and are under development. Others have been proposed and we are waiting to hear back, and others are still in the brainstorming stages. To facilitate the addition of new schemes, we will have the framework do automatic conversions between physics and hosts that have different array organizations. We will also augment the framework to automatically calculate derived variables, for example, to derive potential temperature for a scheme when the host provides temperature and geopotential. Finally, we want to add automatic flipping of arrays to address the fact that some schemes orient their arrays bottom to top and others top to bottom. To improve debugging and investigation of problems, we will improve error handling, hope to extend diagnostic capabilities, and are already working on a visualization tool that shows how variables travel through a physics suite. 
This diagram shows an example for air temperature indicating that it is not touched by the photolysis parametrization but is modified by deep convection. We would like to enable new capabilities in coupling. We would like to allow the schemes to have the dual capability of updating the model state or returning tendencies, which will make it possible to use the CCPP suite definition file to choose whether to compute the physics in process split or time split mode. Additionally, we want to have the ability to auto-generate a mediator cap for a CCPP suite or scheme, allowing a given scheme, such as a land surface model, to be run through CCPP or as a component of an Earth system model. To increase performance, we want to create the capability to run physics schemes in either single or double precision and to dispatch the physics to GPUs or CPUs. Finally, we want to increase the CCPP independence from host models by automatically saving the physics state for restart files, improving handling of constituent arrays, and abstracting surface composites. As shown in the figure, this entails allowing the CCPP framework to handle the multiple surface types that occur inside a grid cell. There have also been developments with the single column model. The GUX Atmospheric Boundary Layer Study case, or GABLES, was added to enhance studies in surface layer, boundary layer, and land atmosphere interactions. And the CCPP has adopted a new format for input data sets, the DEFI format, which was agreed upon on an international SCM workshop hosted by Meteo France in June of 2020. There is ongoing work to add new cases to the SCM, in particular, the classic Australia Wangara case, which is ideal for studies of the convective PBL, the Department of Energy Green Ocean Amazon case, which focuses on the tropical rainforest, and the clouds aerosol and precipitation case that focuses on the subtropical marine boundary layer. We are creating the capability to run arbitrary subsets of a physics suite by creating data models that can be used to replace active components. This will be very important for hierarchical testing, as it will allow testing individual parametrizations. Finally, our next release will have the column replay mode, or the ability to force a single column model run from files saved from a previous UFS run. This is indicated by the light green arrow in the figure, which shows the flow of information from the finite volume cubed sphere dynamical core, the FV3, to the SCM. This complements the use of forcing derived from field campaign observations, which is shown in the dark green arrows. The CCPP is on track for transition to operations in all upcoming implementations of the UFS. This table shows that there will be a moratorium in implementations in 2022. After that, CCPP will be included in the 2023 implementations of HAPS version 1, the Hurricane Analysis and Forecast System, and of RRFS version 1. In 2024, CCPP will be part of the GFS version 17, GAPS version 13, HAPS version 2, and RRFS version 2 implementations. In addition to transition to operations at the National Weather Service, CCPP is being used by NRL in its Neptune model, which also stands for the Navy Environmental Prediction System using the non-hydrostatic unified model of the atmosphere core. The CCPP is also being adopted for use in NCAR models, an activity that falls under the umbrella of the Memorandum of Agreement signed by NOAA and NCAR in 2019. In summary, the CCPP now has additional schemes, updated schemes, and new capabilities such as the schemes needed for the GFS, GEFS, and RRFS baselines. Schemes are being continuously updated and new schemes continue to be added. There have been new capabilities added to the framework, especially with the focus of reducing memory footprint. We have many ideas for expanding the framework and making it yet more efficient and friendly. 
the CCPP is enabling fruitful collaborations through multi-institutional exchanges with the CCPP Physics Code Management Team, the CCPP Framework Developers Meeting, GitHub, and the Physics Interoperability Committees associated with the ESPC, the Earth, Prediction, Earth System Prediction Capability, and ICAMS, the Interagency Council for Advancing Meteorological Services. And finally, the general community continues to benefit from the CCPP. In particular, the CCPP version 5 was released in March of 2021 with updated documentation and an online tutorial. Thank you for listening.